rock stars, roadies, or groupies were harmed in the making of this broadcast. Giving it to you straight and no chaser. This is On the Rocks with Jamie Wilson. Yeah, baby. Hey, how are you guys doing, man? Welcome to On The Rocks, and we've got a great show for you tonight. A, we've got a lockdown looming in uh, in a couple of days. We're going to be locked down again. It's ECQ again, so please, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you guys are getting your supplies and getting ready for two weeks of being stuck at home. But hey, even when you're stuck at home, man, the best thing to do is to just listen to music. That's what got me through the episode one and episode two of the easy cues and believe me it's gonna get me through uh, the third leg of our lockdowns and um, speaking of music we've got a few announcements from offshore music elisa marie is releasing a music video for her song california time this friday august 6th it's a great album uh, check it out on all the streaming platforms that's elisa marie and hey just to let you know um the Eraserheads, uh, Sabado 1995, will have its digital release on August 7. That's a digital release on all streaming platforms. All right? Yung vinyl sa September pa, guys. But we're going to be able to listen to uh, this digital release on August 7. And, of course, check out the 8.8 .8 sale on the Offshore Music website and enjoy discounts from August 8. The 10, you've got merch, we've got music, we've got all sorts of stuff there. So check out the Offshore Music website and enjoy discounts. That's the 8-8 eight, eight sale. And of course, watch out for announcements for the Offshore anniversary. We're celebrating five years of some great music and we're planning something good for you guys. So uh, just before we get on to our amazing guest tonight, I'd like to uh, thank our friends from Buenos Dias Panaderia and the Misty Mountain Cafe. Guys, Milo Buns and the Premium Brewed Coffee. Um, what a great combination, man. That's just happiness. Happiness in your mouth. And of course, thank you so much to our friends from Liquor.ph. Now, we are drinking tonight. We're drinking an old friend, Old Pultney. Old Pultney is going to be coming with free gifts this August. Yeah, check this out, man. Yeah. It's going to be coming with free gifts. Liquor.ph is giving you a great gift when you order Old Pultney this August. Get a free Old Pultney nosing glass. And I've got one right here. I wonder why they call it a nosing glass. Because you smell it anyway. You know, get a free OP nosing glass together with 25% off on bundles and 10% off on individual bottles. Make sure to visit their website to get only the best from the Maritime Malt. For your orders during this ECQ, I know a lot of you are panicking. During uh, ECQ, please email them. Email liquor.ph at sales at liquor.ph for assistance. Pickups can be arranged for you at their Makati office. Tell the checkpoints Jamie sent you. All right, man. So tonight we've got an amazing, amazing guest. Um, this guy has been the soundtrack of our lives. Mine in particular. The early songs that he made with his first band, um, Sugar Free is permanently, permanently embedded in my memories and also with current listening. This guy is incredibly talented, amazingly, amazingly shy for such a such a talented person, such a star, right? And he's one of the nicest guys in the music industry. Always a great, great conversation happens with this guy when you're face-to-face, -face, and we're so glad to have him on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ebe Dancel. Hey, Jamie. Hey, Ebe, how Hello. are you doing, man? I'm good. Hello po sa nanay ko. Oh my God, I, I forgot to tell my mom. She, my mom watches all of my shows, all of my oh. guestings online. She watches live. She doesn't watch replays. She has to wow. be there live. 
Oh yeah. Is this Mexico. gonna be up after? Is this gonna? I should probably yeah, sleep. Yeah. This, this this is gonna this is gonna stay up. This is gonna stay up uh, on the Offshore Music Facebook page. Sige, I'll tell so you now. Hey Jamie, so how are you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you doing? How is this? So we're going into another lockdown, pare. But then, how how has this pandemic been treating you, Ebe? How have we been doing since last year? Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, given given the circumstances, I think I've been very fortunate, and I thank God because not a lot of people can say that. Um, the shows. While dati kasi last year there were a lot of online shows, yeah, and that number has dwindled talaga. But uh, I'm doing some label work now, helping other artists, and uh, I haven't had the courage to go to a barber. So, <laughs> sh- yes, was nice. Do you remember? Nice at the at the shoot at the video shoot of Manatili, correct. They had they had to keep cutting it because Ebe, your hair is all over the place. So tinali ko na It was it was all over your face. Actually, your hair was the single most cause of delay during the shoot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, lahat, I'm so lahat sorry. Lahat tayo ready. Tapos yung buhok mo nasa oh, sandale. Kasi so, ako with the last time we saw each other during the shoot. I had long hair also. I had a ponytail and hindi ako nakatiis the other That's day. That's right. I just chopped it all off, man. Naka full That's mask right. or chaka face shield. And sabi ko, kailangan ko na pumunta ng barbero. And oh, nga. The feeling, yeah, ang sarap, man. Eh. Ang sarap ng feeling. Ang gaan. Nararamdaman mo na ulit yung leeg mo. Like, oh. But it's yeah. funny because it's funny because when I'm out and about, you know, I still check like, oh, where's my ponytail? Ay, nagpagupit pala ako. Yeah, because you've had it for so long. I've had it for so long. I had it more than a year. Diba? But you know, yeah. you're talking about digital shows, uh, streaming shows, and that number has dwindled. I think, you know, since uh, we had a captive audience cause said, or during our first lockdown last year, so people were scrambling. So shows were unique. Shows were, um, you know, uh, they were coming in, you know, not naman too often. Right, but then there were a good lineup of musical um, streaming shows last year, and I right. think the numbers dwindled because I think there's so much content out there, and I I think people are still tired. People are getting tired. Um, yeah, people are, yeah. are going back into books. I that's what I've noticed. People are going back into books, <laughs> painting. You know, people are retreating from the digital world because para yeah. and damine, eh. and damine. as it should be, as it should be. You, know. that's true. you, you can't I mean, you can't spend too much time. On your computer, or on your phones. I would say, parang get out there, but no, we can't. Yeah, not so, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Reading Especially, books, yeah, physical books, huh? Not, oh, not the ones books. on your, not the ones on your tablets, yeah. or on your. I, I don't like some people read books from their phones. I've always found that um, <laughs> a bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> I ako rin. Ako rin. Yung, yung orientation mo, hindi ganun eh. Mag-ganun ka lang. And then I, I find that, you know, I like, the, I like the feel of books. I like the smell of books. Um, also... Actually, I was, I was quite excited because the other day, or was it just yesterday, the days are blending into each other already. As I was doing my <laughs> errands, dumaan ako sa fully booked. Um, and it was so sad because parang there were entire shelves that were removed already. Mm-mm. Because hardly anybody's, you know, patronizing a bookstore and it's a dying breed already, diba, to begin with. May nahanap akong Rolling Stones na biography that I haven't read. I'm a big fan of the Rolling Stones. And yung presyo, nagulat ako, fully booked to, ha? yung presyo ng, ng biography na nahanap ko, pang book sale, pare. 285, oh, 285 pesos. So I was like, hey man, that's that's gonna be my quarantine reading, pare. <laughs> Yeah, a stink, you know? a stink, man. All right, so, so Ebe, I just want to ask you, these, these are questions that I've always been curious to ask musicians, but then we always see each other during gigs, and it's not the time or the place, you know? Um, I want to know, when you were growing up, you know, let's talk about your early life and growing up. What music did you grow up listening to? Oh, um, let's see. We didn't have much uh, growing up. My, my, my father 
was a banker. He, he had one job in one company his entire life. He just kept getting promoted. So that entailed being moved to like different branches uh, all over Luzon. So like Apari, Lawag, Baguio, Tugegrao, Isabela, you name it. We, we've been there. So uh, back then, hindi pa kasi uso yung ano eh, yung reach ng FM stations now, like they have uh, provincial partners now. Yeah. Oo, dati wala sa Manila, Manila-centric ang FM. So, we had a lot of AM <laughs> at home. And, uh, but I do remember that we had a very old school turntable, like a an actual, like a literal table with the uh, cabinet that you yes, open. Yes. Ganyan. And then my parents had uh, had the Beatles. And then when we would travel, we only had a few cassette tapes in the car. So it was always um, either Matt Monroe yes. or Kenny Rogers or the Carpenters. So I think it shows in my in in the music that I make, which is very pop oriented. Like even even when I was doing the whole rock thing with Sugar Free, if you really 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 listen, they are pop songs with yes. distorted with distorted guitars. That's yeah. uh, but. And then I didn't get introduced to OPM until I was in high school. So, yeah, it was a lot of the Beatles. Uh, my my brothers, you know Vin, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So one brother was a Durani. Okay? Ah. So, and then my other brother, uh, ano naman, Spando Ballet naman. And then I've oh, always both, leaned both both camps, Spandau yeah, Ballet, Duran yeah, Duran. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've always leaned towards Spandau Ballet because they sing the sappy love songs. So. And <laughs> Duran Duran was ano kasi party, it was fun. Oh, but yeah. So in the in what what introduced you to OPM? Who was your gateway? Oh, uh... Let's see. Si, ano, si... When I was in high school in Los Baños, we would listen to 97.1 LSFM. I, I, I'm not sure if they're still called that, LSFM. Um, there's this DJ called Trigger Man, and he had the mm-hmm. uh, top 20 at 12. Yeah. So I would, yeah, we would listen, my, 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 uh, my friends and I would listen to his show all the time. And then may papachipaching OPM here and there. But I do remember, uh, and I told Kokisho about this, uh, when I was in first year college, <laughs> my friend brought me to a bar and then there was like dancing. Provinciano kasi ako eh, so hindi ako sanay sa mga ganun. So I was just at the back and then this band came on. And then they started performing a few covers. And then the singer said, all right, now we're just going to do our own songs. And I fell in love with Color Trend instantly. I started uh, following them around. And then whenever they would guest on radio stations, I still had my cassette player and my blank tape. So I would record the whole yes. guesting. And I would play it over and over and over. Hanggang masira yung tape. And then when uh, when their album uh, when their album came out, talaga isa ako sa mga unang bumili. And I listened to it non-stop. I told Cookie all this. She didn't believe me. Uh, <laughs> 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 but I like, why am I But that's that's my story. I'm sticking with it. So it's it's nice when you like grow up with all these diverse um diverse uh influences in music from Matt Monroe and <laughs> uh and um you know those those that kind of music coming also from the Beatles going into color it red 
um, that's a very diverse taste. And then, you know, parang I've always maintained that parang we're, uh, we're a combination of the music that we grew up with, which is basically our parents' taste. Para sa akin, sure. Sarah, para sa akin sure. Sarah Vaughan, Bill Eckstein, Frank Sinatra, at musical theater naman. Kasi yung Ermat ko, musical theater, yung dad ko, siyempre, chairman of the board. Diba? And then my right. counting El- Elvis. And then uh, the rest of the music I grew up with, musical theater. And I didn't discover rock and roll until, you know, much later on. And I was amazed na parang, wow, there's music pala like this. You know? That's when my sister brought home a cassette of sticks. And she said, Jamie, oh, listen wow. to this. And then my cousin started getting me into punk naman. When, when he said, oh, nag-rock and roll na si Jamie, ito, pakinggan mo. Dead Kennedys. Yung mga ganon, sabi ko, wow, The Cure, oh, yun. So parang your the musical cure. taste yeah. start growing and then somehow um, it you you choose one avenue but you carry all that with you. You know, you carry all your tastes with you. Now, when when did you start playing music, Ebe? What got you into picking up the guitar and starting to play it and discovering that you could sing and sing really well, pare? <laughs> Oh, uh, for the singing, uh, I do remember there was uh, this big New Year's party ng angkan ko. So all of the cousins were there and there was all sorts of contests like dancing and games. I, I wasn't good at any of those. And then uh, I think my tito said, oh, they're singing too. And the price is... 20 pesos. So, uh, with inflation, siguro mga ano na yun, mga 500 na yun ngayon. Uh, uh, uh. So, I, I joined because I, I just really needed that money for my candy, uh, for my text. Uh, text, not text message, ha? yung text, guys. Text. Okay. Uh. Look it up, look it up. So, um, I sang Gary V's uh, Reaching Out. Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I won, but I think they made me win because that was the only contest that I joined. So I wasn't <laughs> <laughs> naawa. Wala ano eh, parang oh, look at this guy. He has nothing. Give him 20 pesos. <laughs> but I I was I wasn't sure that I could sing until I was in high school. My I remember some classmates just papainga kasi I didn't have a lot of friends uh, back then until now so i would i uh, know i would uh i would sing to myself and then that's that's when that's when my my classmates discovered that i could sing now when it comes to the guitar uh sivin my brother used to borrow a a guitar from the neighbor and he would practice by himself and i would sit quietly beside him and watch and then when he had to go to school i would run to his room steal the guitar and copy the exact stuff that he he was doing until i i uh we got uh jingle magazine look it up guys it's fantastic (laughs) and then all the chords are there so i just started and then oh wow this is how you play that song and I guess I just, uh, I guess I never stopped. <laughs> it's, it's funny when you mentioned that uh, you started singing to yourself. And if I, if I listen, and I've been listening to your albums um, quite often um, in preparation for the show these past few days. And, you know, it does sound like you're still singing to yourself. I think that's what makes it so intimate and almost spiritual, in my opinion. When um, when I hear your recordings, there's a little bit of that. I feel like you're singing to yourself, and therefore, parang you're singing to everybody, because it's it's like you, it's like it, I feel like I am you, watching Vin play the guitar, and it's just two of us in the room, and I'm quiet there in the corner, and you're just you know playing this amazing music. Yeah, that's that's the the trick I've mastered over the years. I. Uh... I don't do so well with crowds, eh? so whenever I'm nervous, I just imagine that I'm I'm back in my room singing to myself, and that's where it all started for me. And it doesn't have to change. So whether it's a crowd of 
of uh, 50 or 5,000 or 50,000, whether it's recording in front of the legendary Angie Razul or whoever, kahit sa ang studio mo o dalin, I, uh, on stage, if I could take off my shoes, I, I would because that's how I do it in recording. I just take off my shoes. So I, I imagine that I'm, that is just really me and that's when all the pressure uh, goes away. That's actually funny when you mention like, you know, going into a studio and recording in front of Angie, who's basically recorded all the greats, right? He's oh, yeah. legendary, diba. Oh, there's yeah. it, there's already enough pressure of you going in to capture the song. And then when you realize that Angie's behind the board, you're like, shit, pare. <laughs> I, be- I, I better do well, man, because that's Angie. <laughs> you know, I have a story about that. Uh yeah. Yung first vocal session namin, napapansin ni Angie, I was fidgeting as doing this and doing that. And then he stopped and then he said, Ebe, I'm not so familiar. I, I really don't know you. I don't know your band. So do you just sing? It's like, oh, no, 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 I play guitar. And then he got a guitar. Si, si note niya sa akin. And then sabi niya, just, just go. And then for the first few sessions, I had a, I had a, an electric guitar. Mm. And then at some point, they had to take it away because I was strumming so hard. Naririnig na sa ano? Naririnig na sa mic. Naririnig na sa mic. So sabi ni Angie, okay, yeah, just just sing. Uh, well, it's it's different because when I mean I just I I'm I'm a singer also and I don't play any instruments. So for me. Um, as an actor also, it always is a question, and it's a physical question that your body asks, what do I do with my hands? You know, um, <laughs> it's it's always like, so you hold it, you, know, you hold the mic stand, or I've learned to let go of the mic stand, because basically it's always that question, what do you do with your hands? When you go out on stage, even as an actor, I would rather have a prop, I'm holding something, so at least I'm doing something with my hands, because if not, that's what happens. You know, you just keep on fidgeting. And that's why right. Angie's brilliant because when Angie asked that question, he knew how to make you more comfortable in the studio by giving you a guitar. That's and that's then, his genius. That's his and, genius. And then all of a sudden, okay, I can sing because I'm complete. Because you always have Correct. your Correct. guitar, which is Correct. fantastic. Um, yeah. what made you what made you decide naman to pursue a life in music? I mean, you're playing you're playing your guitar. You got your Jingle Magazine. Oh, and by the way, Ebe, there's a great Jingle Magazine group on Facebook. Um, all the oh, old yeah? guys. Yeah, they're, all the old guys are there. Sometimes they publish the pages. Means yung mga comics, yung mga articles na oh. It's. I'll wow. send you a link, but it's a great group, pare. Awesome, awesome. And, I will uh, join, for sure. Yes, yes. Uh, when I, when I, um, when I decided, well, basically, parang my life was decided for me because my father's an actor. We were thrown into theater. That's where I, you know, that's where I grew up. Um, but coming from you and playing inside your room um, and uh, borrowing, borrowing Vin's guitar, what made you decide to pursue this life of music? Because it's a life and it's, a, I think, a deliberate choice because you're still in this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a choice every day, <laughs> twenty plus years. On, every day. Uh, uh, it, it, sometimes it becomes a choice every day, but I'm, uh, you still gotta do it. Um, let's see. I I was never. I, my my brothers and my sisters are all overachievers. Like there's a doctor, there's a lawyer, there's a, an MBA graduate, a dentist an architect and then there's me uh and i was i wasn't a particularly good student i had the hardest time trying to uh pay attention my attention span is just uh, normally all over the place and then but to your point i think that i didn't find music music found me and I discovered I could sing. And then I had to learn the guitar and the keyboard from, 
from scratch and then i realized while while singing other people's songs i wasn't doing very well so parang parang hindi maganda and then uh so I could say, I'll just I'll just do my own. I'll just write my own songs. And that's still my mentality to this day. Like sometimes I hear a really nice song uh, on Spotify. So I would I try to sing along to it. And I always manage to do like a really horrible job. So I think <laughs> Oh pare. I think I'm I'm I've always been better off uh writing and singing my own songs because that way i don't make mistakes you know because it's my song anyway so parang yeah. pag magkamali ako sabihin ko lang oh i'm improvising <laughs> sinadya ko yun sinadya ko yun <laughs> sinadya ko yun guys sinadya ko yun and that's i think that's that's the beauty that's the beauty of it when you, when you discover something and you know you realize that this is what you want to do um, there are two roads that you can take. Whether you start a band with doing all the covers and then eventually write, or you 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 can't do covers because they come out wrong. So you write, you start writing your own from scratch. And yeah. I think your your songwriting has uh, you know just amazingly improved and matured over the years. And I you know I'm sorry to use that word. I hate that word matured because it just makes us sound old. <laughs> but really, the life that you've chosen uh, by making this choice in, you know, that, that you make every day to pursue music and to remain a musician and a songwriter, um, it does reflect in your music. And I'd like to talk to you about your albums, um, your solo albums, um, which of, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to dwell on Sugar Free. It's a soundtrack to all our lives. Yeah, let's not. You let's know, not. Um, I love I love I love Sugar Free. <coughs> <clears throat> but when when I was listening, what blew my mind in my listening, um, my my days of listening to your stuff, is uh, your your first solo album, Dalawang Mukha ng Pag-ibig, which was out in 2012. I think that blew my mind because I went backwards. Eh. I started listening again from Manatile to Balik Tanaw to yeah. uh, Wadaan. I went backwards. Yeah. Eh. Para lang just so I can chart, you know, how how uh, the, the, what the differences are. And really... You made some outstanding and, if I can say, brave musical choices for Dalawang Mukha ng Pag-ibig. Um, what was your idea going into this? Because it was all of a sudden you had incendiary guitar solos. You had very strange, <laughs> ta- you know, you had very strange changes in some of the songs. Some of yeah. them sounded really anthemic and epic, but still with that intimacy. Pero parang alaki ng intimacy mo. Um, mm. What went? What went? Uh, what was was going on in your head when you when you started that album? That was that was the hardest album to make, uh, really? Jamie, because I really believe that uh, when you are part of a successful band and then you just decide to leave, you will be competing with a ghost for a really long time. And uh, buti hindi pa uso yung social media nung umalis ako ng Sugar Free. But I did receive my fair share of emails um, that disappointed uh, fans and people from the industry as well who were trying to convince me not to leave the band because, you know, parang somebody actually said career suicide to just go on your own um so there was there was pressure to uh prove myself to to a lot of people and then when when i started writing songs i was to be honest i was angry i was lashing out because you know, you'll see, I'll prove you wrong, and all that. But uh, somewhere in the middle, para naging positive yung outlook ko is. Mm. And uh, instead of like saying, Do, I'm gonna prove people wrong, I'm just gonna go into the studio and prove myself right. There and we go. it's, it's a, I think it's a big difference in perspective, and it allowed me to just keep writing. So, 
uh, the songs started coming in, and then I asked the label, so who do I get to play? Sabi nila, you're the boss. So, yun na, para may virtual na whiteboard in my head, pare. So, parang, oh, for this song, I'm going to get uh, Raymond Marasigan, Buddy Zabala, and Francis Reyes because it's anthemic, so I need yes. them. Yes. And then for, for this song called Wag Kang Magalala, I need, like, the best. So, I got Jazz Nicolas, I got Kakoy Legaspi, I got the late Ronnie Dizon to, mm. to be part of that song. And so on and so forth. So every song, it was always a different uh, set of musicians. For my last track called, uh, shit, uh, title lang. Wag na tayo mag oh. uh, I wanted it to be a fun, uh, Ben Folds kind of, of song. So, and I knew Mikey Amistos of Shidad and Jazz Nicolas of the Itchworms are big Ben Folds 5 fans. So sabi ko, puta kayo, puta kayo dito sa studio. <laughs> and then, we recorded everything from scratch. And then when we were done, sabi namin, and Sancho, Sancho uh, mm. co-produced the album. Sabi namin, ano pang kulang? Yeah, let's get some horns in there. Let's get everything. So I'm, I'm grateful to to my label at the time, Warner, for taking such a uh, big chance on on me. Like just to allow me to uh, do whatever I wanted to do, and it's parang I, I I learned a lot from it. So parang it's what I practice now uh, with my artists, which mm. I wanna talk about later. Like yeah. when they when they wanna do something, para as long as it sounds fun, it sounds logical. Para yeah, sige, go natin ang paraan. Pero pag hindi na talaga, sabi ng sa kanila that's a bit too much. <laughs> So basically, yeah. basically, you have to make decisions as an artist also. Kung sino, like you were just enumerating the, the, the amazing musicians who played. Kung sino yung bagay sa kanta eh. Kung Dapat ganun. Kung bagay sa kanta, dapat ganun eh. Because Hindi, parang you're... Huwag kang kumuha dahil kaibigan mo lang siya. That's a great disservice to your friendship, I think. <laughs> Baka mag-away pa kayo. <laughs> oo, oo. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a great guiding light that, uh, you know, the rule of thumb is basta bagay sa kanta. Tapos, syempre, I'm sure, masaya din sa studio. Masaya din yung proseso. You have to take that oh, also into consideration, yeah. di ba? The, oh, yeah. not, only the, not only the fun that you're going to be having, but the creativity that was probably bouncing around those studio walls as you were recording it from scratch. Especially oh, yeah. with, you know, with, with the musicians that you called. Parang it, it also lends the, the possibility of the song taking a life of its own. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. By, by bringing agree. these people in. And, so it's not just uh, all you? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. This solo thing, para miss no Marian. It, it takes, a, it takes a, a village. Actually, it takes a whole town. I wouldn't be where I am today and this isn't like false modesty stuff it really does take a village like if you don't have bandmates who are loyal to you who who will play for you through thick and thin to an audience of five to fifty thousand if you don't have a very supportive management if if you know your label does not support your your music then where would i be i i would probably be back in my bedroom uh, singing to myself, which is fine too. I have, I have no problem with that. But uh, you know, the the musicians, especially in in dalawa mo ka ng pag-ibig, I guess hindi lang nila sinasabi sa akin. But they could like feel the weight on my shoulders because I had uh, you know I had something back then. I I, I felt like I had something to prove yeah. that I wasn't done. And that I could, if I tried hard enough, I think I could actually make it on my own. Uh, stuff like that. So they made it really fun. So, uh, they, they, kami they, they, took, sa they took some of the pressure off you. They took a lot of the pressure, really. Uh, them just showing up and smiling and then telling me, hey, it's going to be okay. Ganun sila lagi. And then... We would have, 
uh, Crazy Katsu. <laughs> Ni Shinji. All the time. All the time. We have Crazy Katsu for lunch, Crazy Katsu for dinner. The next day, we we do it again. You know, we eat the same stuff, drink the same stuff, and then make jokes and, you know, that that fantastic support system. I that is my wish for for every musician out there well going back to you saying that if you didn't have the village or the town backing you up and you know helping you out that you'd be happy being back in your room playing your songs for yourself well let me tell you we would not be happy <laughs> because i think you you and your music um you know being released onto this world has helped a lot of people has bring has brought joy to a lot of people has brought i mean that's that's what that's what the caption when i was posting when i was putting out the poster today um and this after listening to all your music you are one of the few musicians and i can count this on less than one hand and one or less than five fingers you have the ability to break my heart and at the same time give me hope and i don't know <laughs> how the hell you do that um and i you know just to shout out to somebody on the comment section see camille estember um, just to back up what I'm saying, Sir Ebe is one of my inspirations why I am writing songs. Can you imagine that, Ebe? The music that you have written, um, that you have shared with us, have not only you know helped us get through heartbreak, helped us get through loneliness, brought us joy, but you're also inspiring people to write their own songs. And that just keeps the musical cycle going. For the world, for the world. Can you imagine? That's the world. It's not just our world, but it's the world. Thank and that's you. something that is uh, really a, a huge, huge and tremendous blessing upon each of our lives. Um, I think um, I think the Lawang Mukha ng Pag-ibig was such... You, you made brave and bold choices and then you shifted gears in Bawat Daan. Yeah. You shift in gears, and really, the, the shifting gears, I think they, it had more, you went back to, I think, more pop sensibilities. There weren't too many incendiary guitar solos in this yeah, album. But, yeah, that but was I, the plan. But, but the, these, these uh, three, or actually four tracks blew my mind. Um, I love La Cambini version one and version two, and I love the fact that there's a version one and version two. <laughs> Um, La Cambini is that, that that's on my permanent playlist now. And what blew my mind also is are your your, your duets in this mm. album? Mm. Your duet with Yang on prom, and of course Makita Kamole with Regine Velasquez. <laughs> and I was thinking, wow, what a pair. When I was reading the liner notes, I'm like, wow, what a pairing. I didn't realize it was Regine. I'm like, what yeah, a pairing. Yeah, yeah. What a pairing of Ebe and Regine. But this was coming from after I, I listened to the song. That's what inspired me to read the liner notes because your voices blended together so well. It was a different blending with Yang and it was a different blending with Regine. And I realized it was Regine and I'm like, how does one record a duet with Regine Velasquez, man? That girl can sing and you know blow up the world, Barry. How, yeah. how, how how was that process? Quite intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> because when when uh, we, when the label asked me to to re-record some of my old stuff, so we could, yeah, and I'm I'm tired of singing by myself. So let's just get friends. So I called Yang. Oh. She Yang. I wasn't even done asking. She, she goes, yes, Kuya, yes, for sure, for sure. Send me the song. Let's do it. Let's do it now. But with Miss Regine, that's that's Regine Velasquez. Right? Yeah, that's Regine Velasquez, man. I used to watch her on TV all the time. Oh my God. So when the label said, Yeah, we got we got Regine. It's like, oh, come again. <laughs> we got Regine to to sing Makita Kamuli. So I go, okay, can she do it by herself? <laughs> do I have to be there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. So with with, with Mr. Jean, because with Yang, it was really fun. 
Oh, eh kasi yes. yun, yun, magkakilala yes. na kayo, di ba? Barkada May... kami ni Yang. It's oh, oh. so much fun. It's so much fun. But with with Miss Regine, I felt like parang oh man, parang seryoso. No? So fine, sige, sige, sige. Um let's do it. So I was I was listening to I remember listening to the initial mixes of the song. I felt like crying. And I, I do remember telling my family, I just sang with the Gene Velasquez. Game over. <laughs> Mike ready to retire. Mike oh, dropped ready, in, pare. Ready to retire. But, I mean, I... Growing up, I had, I had no idea I would be where I am now. To, to to honest to God, I I never had grand dreams um, for myself. Like, ang pangarap ko lang dati sa buhay after college, kasi nag nagko commute ako to school eh. So and then I would see these guys in uh, in their Corollas, wala ng Corolla ngayon eh. Their Corollas, tapos naka naka korbata sila. Kasi mm-hmm. ko, hey, I I can be that guy. I think I can be that guy. So is the kumeroman semblance na pangarap baka yun na yun never in my wildest dreams did i you know imagine myself to to be working with Ryan Kayabihab and Noel Cabangon oh my goodness and be be friends and be mentored by not only some of the best musicians but some of the all-time great Nice guys. Yes. Diba? Like, uh, if you, I, I, I'm uh, proud to say that I'm, I'm friends and that I'm, I'm mentored in so many ways by Ryan Kayabiab. I can have uh, casual conversations with the man. And I can have serious questions for him. And Gary V. Oh my God! You know, like. Gary V asking me to write songs for him, me singing with Regine Velasquez, I think I have overachieved. <laughs> I have, uh, you know, I have... You, you have uh, gone think, beyond the guy in the Corolla, pare. Yeah, yeah. I think I have, uh, I think I have achieved more than what I've set out to do. And that's why... Uh, Lately, ganun na ako tumugtog eh. Makikita nyo sa mukha ko eh. It's just a grateful heart playing someone who doesn't need to prove himself to anyone anymore. Someone, you know, so. Here, we have, we have a comment here from Karen Gabwa. One day we'll grow old and future generations will speak of Ebe's songs as part of our Filipino music history. I don't know about that, but thank you. Oh, hmm. I, I, think, I think we should. You know, that that's the thing with our... You know, that's the problem with our history. Um, when I was basically go- going back to me shopping for a book, right? How I'd wish that there are more books on the shelves that, t- that tell the stories of our, our local heroes, our local musicians, our own artists. Right? I would love right? to pick up a book and, you know, like, okay, Juan de la Cruz, yeah, I'm there. Razorback, yeah, I'm there. You know what I mean? I would love to fill my shelves with that, but we don't have a sense of history in that sense. No, we don't. Um, no, we don't. That, that, care, that carries yeah. that. You know, Jamie, I was I was in Baguio last week for official business, and I found myself in this uh, coffee shop, and then right beside it there was a bookstore, which only sells Filipino books. Yes. Yeah, uh, that's near. If you're from Baguio, that's near Brent. It's right in front of Brent, and then I. I really wanted to buy books of music, like biographies, but there's no book about Ryan Kebiab or Levi yeah. Celerio. Yes. Uh, I think our writers should, you know, get on that. Go make a book but, about Mr. C. Eva, this is one of the reasons why I do this show is because to get the stories of people. I mean, I can't write the book. Um, I, I'm better uh, face-to-face and this is one of the reasons why we put together this show so we can talk to you know, artists such as yourself and get some stories on what went into the making of this album how you grew up, what music you were listening to so it's somehow preserving it 
and you know for future generations to light the way you know to light the way for future generations of like hey wait what was he listening to what what how did he how did he record his first solo album and they can actually go back to the show and said yeah man get your friends get sino yung bagay sa kanta get them to play in your songs something yeah. as simple as that can help yeah. um the future generations and uh, was this mount was this mount cloud the i know the yes! in Baguio, mount cloud yes that's by yes. hill station i think diba malapit so. sa malapit sa hill station yeah that's a great bookstore but again diba where's where's the book on mr c yeah. Where's all his, that's going to have to be a thick book, pare. Baka may volume I'd line up. Volume yeah. <laughs> I'd line up for that. I would definitely line up for that. So you shifted gears for your second album. And then, funnily enough, for Balik Tanaw, which means, like, you know, going back to your you know, point of view, you decided to go backwards and, <laughs> you know, breathe new yeah. life into your old songs. And I must Correct. say, um, a lot of people, you know, we're we're a country of nostalgic people. So nostalgia played a big part until you broke it. Um, when people, you know, some of your arrangements of some of the, the songs, and it's just you also um playing um like your arrangement of Mariposa on this song with the piano. It's it's just something that you know, giving a different flavor, but I think it goes beyond the nostalgia trip because. This was how many years? Balik was 2020, right? When did you 20. first write and release Mariposa, for example? Um, that was in the 90s. No, no. Uh, we released Sawakas in 2003. Ah, 2003. Now, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, the logic behind Balik was it was uh, my 20th year in the business and effectively, Sugar Feast um, the 20th year also. So, nagkaroon kami ng reunion ng aking uh, former label ng, ng uh, Poly East. And that was the idea to re-record the songs. And then when we were we were discussing, parang, I think someone mentioned na, oh, it has to be like radically different or like so much more beautiful than the original. Tapos sabi ko, you know what? People are always going to have opinions and people are always going to have favorites and they're always going to compare. I'm going to record the songs um, the way I've always envisioned them to be. Ah. Or with with my, uh, with the age and the experience now, this is how I'm going to approach the songs. And I'm very blessed again a village, uh, Chino David of Hale mm. uh, came on as producer. So, syempre, ano na yan? Sikat na internet. So, mag, mag-share, kami na, <laughs> mag-share kami ng ideas via file sharing. I think it was WhatsApp or, or Viber. I think it was WhatsApp. So, uh, he, would, he would send the song to me. Then, sabi ko, this is perfect. And then, he would send something else. Sabi ko, it needs more. It needs less. Until... Until we got it right. But don't get me wrong. Uh, if you like the arrangement of the album, it was because of Chino David. Uh, ano lang ako, taga-kwento lang ako. Hindi ako <laughs> pag nagkakwento kasi ako, ano eh, non-musical terms palagi. So, si Chino yung nagta-translate sa akin into notes and uh, whole arrangements. And then that album culminated uh, sa concert ko sa Metro Tent. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was also the day we launched Balik Tanaw. So parang we were trying to do so many things at the same time. And, and then I, I realized right before the show that we had succeeded. That was, that was one of the happiest days of my life. Sa totoo lang. This was your show at ng gabi? Sa Metro Tent? No. Ah, so Metro, Metro Tent was... Uh, wait, ano title na show na yun? Eve Dancel with uh, the Manila String Machine. Ah, that's so, right. Yes. Oh, and then, that was, that was very special for me. 
because si Tracy Nicolas, my best friend, was my manager back then. Uh, I remember October 31, we had the show in Makati to launch the ticket sales. All right? And then, so, I went home to Los Baños, and then the next day, I called Tracy at at uh, 10 a.m. because I had just woken up, and then I had some silly question before I went out to buy my lunch. And then, she goes, I need to tell you something. I said, what happened? Sabi niya, your concert has sold out. I said, wow. what? Like, right now? Sabi niya, it sold out while you were performing last night. And then we just both started crying. So I said, oh, this isn't real. But we were also in the middle of uh, making the album Balik Tanao. So there wasn't really much time to celebrate. So, yeah, and then it culminates lahat dun sa concert na yun. And we were actually already planning for a repeat kasi maraming hindi nakabili ng tickets. But then, oh, yeah, two weeks later, the lockdown was announced. And guess what? In two days, there's going to be another lockdown. I know. And we're, we're back, we're back. To, well, I wouldn't say we're back to square one because at least now, alam na natin yung galaw. Yes, yes, As I agree. much as possible. Uh, unless, of course, your... Uh, the, the checkpoints uh, will tell you na umiba pa pala yung requirements para pumasok o tumawid. Tapos babalik ka. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think going going back to Balik Tanao, I think I think you're right. Uh, you're you're uh, it's not just the musical arrangements of the album but also with the way you sang it. The the age, the wisdom, the experience um, of how you sang it, because I was going back and forth from the original version to this version, you know, just to compare, just so you know, hey, I want to see how how much of it is different, and the way you're singing it, um, and the way you're telling the story, as you say, nga taka kwento ka lang, pero pare, the way you make it kwento is that you're bringing all these years of your experience and your and the wisdom and your ups and your downs, and you're singing the song like it was for me brand new um Thank you. if you compare if you compare the way you sang it from before it felt like a little kid testing the water and you know when you listen <laughs> exactly when you listen to balik tanao it's this this kid has grown up to be a man and he's a great swimmer you know exactly i think and that's, uh, that's the beauty of it yeah i'm glad you noticed that because if you've been following me for the past 20 plus years and then you listen to our first ever album. There were some songs there na pag pinapakinggan ko na, nagka-cringe ako. Kasi parang, <laughs> it, my, my, my style of singing was largely untrained and inexperienced. So I just sang from wherever. Ganun lagi. Todo bigay lagi. So it was kind of, at some point, it was kind of all over the place. And that's what I learned through years of performing, of watching uh, the great singers out there, of going to uh, uh, voice lessons with uh, Mam Kichi Molina, and losing my voice, regaining my voice, losing it again, and finally learning how to preserve, finally learning how to sing the right way, and how to how to sing because not because you want to impress people but but you're you're singing because it's it's a gift from god yes. and it's a way to celebrate uh yes. that that gift so i'm glad you noticed that i think the beauty of it the beauty of it was when you develop technique and you know te that's technique whether you take voice lessons but you also develop a technique by your incessant gigging uh, like you said, when you lose your voice, I mean, like, how many gigs have you had where, oh my God, wala akong boses, pero kailangan ko kumanta. Kasi walang ibang kakanta. And you figure out a way. Diba? You figure out a way that to, to you, I have to sing. So there's no there's no way around it, diba? So you develop that's a way. What, yep. That's what you do. Your, that's what yeah, you that, do. That's what you have to do. And it's funny because even with technique, I, I a lot of musical theater people as singers have fantastic technique. 
And sometimes I notice, and I notice that when you rely on technique, uh, some of the emotion gets taken away because you're relying on technique. And that's not the case with you. For you, um, so this is in my opinion, I'm, I'm not an expert by any means. But when, I'm, when I was doing it uh, side by side comparison, your technique has developed into, I would say, nuances, dynamics that serve the emotion of the song. Not just your, your, your end result is not to hit a note. Your agenda is to tell the story and hit that emotion using all the tools available. And I think that's what makes this Balik, the Balik Tanao album completely different from you know the previous recordings of these these uh, these wonderful songs that we've grown up listening to it's it's thank, that yeah. it's your it's your growth thank you for verbalizing it for me that's that's what i wanted to do eh? pero parang in my head hindi ko may explain so you're right it's it's probably the nuances but more than anything it's it's really the experience and just the absolute joy of watching uh, the country's best singers and learning a, a thing or two from them. Yun, yun naman yun eh. Part of, of a musician's job, really, is to steal. Yes. That's what we do. We steal. Yeah. Diba, good artists, what's that saying? Good artists borrow, great artists steal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Something I don't know like who that. said yeah. that, but that always has stuck with me. See, Juno Obanda oh. is here on the feed right now watching. Shout out to Direct Juno. He's correcting me now. The Mount Cloud bookstore now moved now from Hill Station. Okay, I stand corrected, Juno. I stand corrected. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but, basta, it's right in front of Brent. Oh, sila lang yung alam kong all Filipino bookstore dun sa bag. Fantastic bookstore. Oh, Fantastic. And then I wish I had more... more time. I wish I had more time to just, you know. But I didn't. I had an hour or two and then I had to go now. And then we have also uh, Mr. Boyet Season is on the feed also. Um, hey, and he's Boyette. talking about a song that we're going to be listening to in a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, Boyet says, For me, Manatili will forever be a part of the musical archive of my life. I can be a snob musically, pero walang kasing ganda ang mga titik at melodya nung awiting yon. Pinaiyak mo ako, Ebe. Ayan, si Boyet na yan. Ha? And Boyet's a tough crowd. Ha? Boyet's You're gonna make me cry, crowd. Boyet. <laughs> Well, I think it's time to make everybody cry because this song, um, this song Manatili that he's describing right now, we have a music video to play for you guys. And this was directed by Juno Obanda. I am uh, very honored and proud to be a part of this video, uh, taking care of everybody in the shoot as part of safety. And um, in my good fortune, my cameo rin ako. So let's watch uh, Ebe Dancel's uh, new single, the music video for Manatili. Sarado pa. Wala pang palabas. Pandemic eh. Uh, Pwede po sumilip. Kahit sandali lang. Oh, sige, Pads. Sandali lang ha. Opo. Thank you. Sana sa aking tabi Hindi tiyak ang gabi Hiling ko hawakan mo ang aking kamay Hangad ko ang iyong gabay Tasal ko Ikaw ang aking ilaw Ang 
At kung iyong gabay Kasal ko ay Yakapin mo ako Sa gitna ng gulo Bigyan ng pahinga Ang pagod na puso Sasadlak iyong iangat Dalangin ko'y manatili Kasana sa aking tabi Kung ako'y magkamaling Huwag sukuan Kasal ko ay Yakapin mo ako Sa gitna ng gulo Bigyan ng pahinga Ang pagod na puso Ilumin ang sugat Ang nasasadlak iyo Sa panahon ng kadiliman Huwag mo muna sana akong iiwan Hangad ko ang iyong gabay Sana ikay manati Yeah, that was Manatili, man. Oh, that's so beautiful. You know, I've watched this video so many times, Ebe. From before color grading, pinapakita sa akin ni Juno, ano, ano, ano yung shot mo, okay lang, ganyan, ganyan. And now watching it again, I've seen it so many times, and I cannot help but but notice how perfect your hair was in all the shots. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I noticed? As I was, uh, I never got to tell, Juno, thank you, by the way. I never got to tell Juno this. But if you look at my my uh, well, I'm I'm very I'm going to be very honest here. Huh? If you look at my my other videos, the ones before this one, you can tell talaga what the pandemic has done to my body. I look uh, I look older, man. And that's okay. <laughs> I, I don't that's okay. I don't mind. But parang talagang that's that's what the pandemic has done to all of us. That's a pandemic. That's my only pandemic song, by the way. I uh, I I'm gonna tell you the story about the song. Uh, this was actually uh, during the first few months of of the first lockdown. We are we are about to be on our third, mm-hmm. and then all the shows were gone. Everything everything was gone. So. It was a period of great uncertainty for me. 
And then that's when I started talagang developing a new relationship with God. I'm not the most, hey, I'm not the most religious person I know. But I started talking to God nonstop. And then I wrote I wrote this song for uh, to him and for him around 3 in the morning. I woke up from a really bad dream and my hands were shaking. So instinctively, I got my guitar and then I started strumming. And then I wrote the song. Uh, but yeah, this the that's the pandemic look, <laughs> complete well, think, with the hair and all. Oh, in fairness, ang ganda ng hair, ang ganda ng hair, perfect. <laughs> Mayrap lang iman every shot. Oh, tumagal lang yung shoot. After every take, we're like, okay, okay, we have to fix your hair. We have to fix your hair. I had to be managing the safety now. Okay. Okay, disinfect your hands before you go touch his hair because it's gonna get in his face. <laughs> you know all these like little yeah. things, but it's 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 beautiful when you say, you know, during this pandemic. Yeah, I think all of us. I mean, I I developed more white hair. Nasa gitna yan, di mo lang makita. Mm-hmm. I had I, I developed more white hair. I developed anxieties um, that yeah. were never present in my life before. But at the same time, I also developed a relationship, a better relationship with the higher power, with God. Yep. I yep. found myself um, in situations where, you know, like you like you said, a time of great uncertainty where you're questioning all your choices that you made in your life, especially when artists were declared non-essential. That was the hardest blow to me because parang, wow, oh, yeah. you just basically said 40 years of my life, 42 years of my life of being in the arts doesn't mean anything at this time. And I seriously started questioning my choices. And really, in these, in these 3 a.m. conversations with God, it gave me the strength to meet the next day. It gave me the strength to find a reason to smile instead of just worrying all the time. Right. And I, right. Realized, I realized that you don't have to dig too deep to find a reason to smile. One, you're breathing. You're alive. You know? You're not sick. You're not sick. And yeah, all these other things that we're worried about, um, you know, like my career and, you know, if shows are ever going to come back, which I firmly believe it will once we get our act together. Um, But I think it's made me into a more patient, more tolerant person, this pandemic, more understanding person, because we're all going through, you know, we're all going through this crisis, but we're all manifesting it in different ways. Correct. So I think the beauty of it is that we're more understanding, at least the people I interact with are more inder- understanding of what you're going through. And I think Manatili is a perfect testament. Thank God that you had, thank God you had a conversation with God at 3 a.m. And so that we have this song in our lives so that anytime that we're feeling lost, anytime we're feeling stressed, we can just lock ourselves up in a room like we're going to be locked up in our rooms for two weeks and listen to this song and think about our relationships and not only with God. I think it, it's your relationships with everybody. You know? Exactly. So now to your point, when we were declared non-essential, you know, what is what is life without art? What is life without music? What is life without theater? Without movies? What is civilization without yes. art? You know, so um, people, I guess that's a government's way of um, just taking care of its people, making sure that we're safe. But I don't agree that we're not essential. I do not. I do not. In, in fact, when the lockdown happened, everybody turned to the arts. Exactly. Exactly. What, you know, was, keeping, uh, what was keeping us sane? What was keeping me sane is listening to music, watching films, Netflix. YouTube, I started drawing again. I started painting again. Because there were no shows to prepare for or to rehearse for. So that's where I turned to. And I and I realized this is not only essential for civilization or society, but it's also essential for each and every person. Whether you are a creator or a, a, a fan or a consumer, somebody, yes. or a consumer yeah, who, somebody who appreciates this. And needs it to stay stay sane, or at least as sane as we can be, diba? Yeah, yeah. I mean, can you believe? Uh, 
I had a, there was a podcast pre-recording yesterday. I was with with uh, Mr. C. Mm. And he has written like 25 songs. My God, can diba? you believe it? Diba? That's two albums easily. Two or three albums uh, easily. So uh, I'm I'm really happy for 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 musicians yung pagiging resilient nila that they just refuse to give up uh when the when, when the lockdown was announced i didn't even have my i didn't even have my gear with me so yeah. for for bayanihan musikahan i used my phone and so many people tuned in i didn't even have wifi then so many pe- people tuned in bumiga yung data ko so, in the middle of the show, naputol, naputol. Uh, but maybe now is also uh, the time for me to uh, say thank you to all of the fans because I do receive letters to this very day. Like, it's parang ano eh, parang nagkokopyahan na nga sila minsan eh, because para para sila sinasabi, thank you for the music, you know, it has guided me. Uh, throughout this very difficult time and you know from me you know right back at you i where would we be now if you weren't writing us letters if you weren't tuning into to this show or to any of of our shows uh what i can reassure you is that i i am with jamie and at some point we will come back you know we're going to have shows again. And they're going to be bigger and better and much more fun because that means we can hug each other again, give each yes. other high fives. When was the last time you guys shook someone's hand? Wow, I, I, don't, I don't remember. Man. I, don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. And and, and and I'm a safety officer, so I'm, I'm, I'm even preventing yeah. people, other people from shaking each other's hands or even... Yeah, their it's... Fights, you know? it's uh, it's not even a fist bump. It's like an, it's elbow, an elbow bump. Yeah, it's an elbow bump, right? We have a comment yeah. here from my wife who's tuning in right now, and she has a good point Go from Gold Soon. Artists are frontliners. Medical personnel took care of the body. Artists care for the mind, the heart, and the soul. Amen. That's it. I'm a lucky guy. I found a woman yes, who loves you are, my friend. Much, who's much smarter than me <laughs> and much, much more eloquent than, than I am. Tama, tama. Tumpak yung sinabi niya. Oh. And now, we are now you're... Liners. Yeah, we are frontliners. And now you are taking care of the frontliners now. Um, you know, in the music industry, you are now the A&R manager who <laughs> is, you know, is in charge of taking care of artists and developing them. Now, A&R manager, um, the, the artist and repertoire, that, that's such a broad scope. Um, so for those of us who don't know, what exactly that entails? Can you explain to us what you do okay. in this what? in this uh, new 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 position you have in the music industry? Yeah, this is what I do. Okay, me, Ebe, not the other A and R's. They have they may may have more specific roles, but my 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 responsibility mainly is to look for talent, whether old or new. Di, di naman old. Ano na? Yung nandyan na, sa kayong bago. Ayan, tinaganda ko lang ng konti. <laughs> and once, what, what Wide Scope Entertainment has been doing, uh, at least for our first year, we look for the fresh talent talaga. Uh, the guys and the ladies with the songs, with the drive, but di nila alam ko ano yung gagawin nila. So, uh, so far we have signed uh, 46 Hope Street, which is a band from Paranaque. We've signed Jam Quijano, who is my kababayan from Los Baños. We have signed Catharsis, uh, ladies who are fresh out of high school, and uh, they just recorded their first song. Uh, we just signed, who else? Well, I signed myself. Ako yung luma. <laughs> Kailangan may luma eh. Oy, puro bago! <laughs> Hanap tayong matanda. Ah, sige, ako na lang. <laughs> I volunteer. I volunteer my services, man. But, yeah. So, once you find the talent, you develop it. Now, not only am I the a and I'm also their producer. So, we spend 
countless of hours on Viber, on Zoom, on Google Meet, just talking about songs. And it's very challenging because even before we get to the studio, we need to isolate ourselves and then we need to take tests. And then while we're in the studio, the entire time, unless you're singing or you're eating, then you keep your mask on yeah. at all times. And oh man, you wear it for like 12 straight hours, your face yeah. begins to hurt. Your ears. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, um, but the most challenging part about it is having to record someone online. Like, uh, for, for Manatili, kasi, and for my next single, my producer is Pico Blanco. And Rico's not fully vaccinated yet, as far as I know. So, magre-record kami, nasa bahay siya, naka-zoom. So, uh -huh. there's like a monitor to my left, so I would sing, and then after, I'd have to look to my left, sabihin ko sa TV, Rico, was that okay? It's very, it's very strange. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, it, it's not, it's not how usually, al you know, how albums are recorded um, no, with not. the lack of having that person actually there in the booth. And you also have to realize that by doing it that way, you're also restricted by what kind of speakers he's listening to you on. Exactly, At exactly. And dami mga, exactly. and dami mga barriers or challenges eh. Yeah, so now I feel bad for my artists because gusto ko sabihin sa kanila, guys, two years ago, this wasn't how we, we did it. We we would be all in the studio and and then we would share ideas and then you can tell me what you want to tell me to my face. <laughs> you know, whether it's a good or bad thing and we'd all eat together and then after this, we would mix the song together. After this, we would go on tours. You could play, you do schools and malls and, and whatever just to promote your new single. Now everyone is, uh, obviously for, for obvious reasons, ev everything is, has to be done online. So we would launch singles online. Um, some, some, one of my artists decided to do 46 Home Street decided to do a listening party so it's it's very challenging but um lumis na ako sa ano sa tanong mo ang trabaho ng ng A&R at least trabaho ko hanapin ko yung talent i-develop ko yung talent i-produce ko yung talent uh, but most importantly uh, it's very crucial to impart to these musicians that you know, not only do you have to be a good musician, you have to be a good human being. Yes. Because I cannot stand to be in the studio with you if you're, you know. If you're acting out. If you're acting if you're, out. If you're acting out. So you approach everything with grace, uh, with, with humility. And that's, that's, that's who my artists are. They're very grateful for the opportunity. They're very excited. Even if the launch is online, they feel like it's the biggest show of their lives. Uh, you know, but the, the search does not stop. Um, <laughs> I just saw a comment. From, oh. I want to say hi to Audrey. How <laughs> 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 Good. Okay, I'm gonna read Audrey's comment, but she can't flash it because it's the it's on the private chat. She says, uh, "Nagtanong siya, good human beings ba kami dati, Ebe?" Yan ang tanong ni Audrey. You are fun human beings, and you still are. Yeah, there we go. Being a good human being, I think. I mean, this goes beyond professionalism, um, because it you does. can be professional, but then it can also be very tedious to work with you, even if you're being professional, because you can still be a jerk. You know, and I found out early when, because uh, I've been in theater for 42 years, Ebe, and there was a point in time where I wasn't taking it seriously, and I would I was taking it for granted, and basically, you know, I would show up late, I would show up unprepared, because I had been born into the theater world, right. and in my adult years, I took it for granted, and there came a time where nobody would touch me with a 10-foot pole. 
and all the directors were saying, no, Jamie, you know, you're extremely talented or, you know, whatever, but you're just hard to work with. And I realized that I had changed that um, within myself and I had to fight my way back from being given, given. I mean, there was a time where I didn't even have to audition. I was being given lead roles and I took it for granted and I had to fight my way back into the theater world. Um, and I started out, naging crew ulit ako. Naging crew ako, naging production, naging technical director until I had to fight my way back on stage. And it's a constant proving ground, um, especially with the directors I've worked with for, uh, you know, uh, years that I am not, I'm not going to go back to the old Jamie of taking this for granted. And I myself realized that every day that you're in a rehearsal hall, every day that you get to sing, every day that you get to tell a story to, and I call it magic, to create magic out of, you know, these creative minds in the room. Every single day you're able to do that is a blessing. And it's a privilege. It's a privilege. And it's such a privilege because, you know, I could have just given this up and not changed myself and where would I be? I would probably be stuck in a dead-end job, completely unhappy, um, mm. not creating, and when I changed myself and my attitude towards everything, and like you said, just becoming grateful to be able to do this, yeah. it changes your entire outlook. And no matter how hard it seems, if you're just happy to be there, everything becomes easy. Yeah. You know, I, I think I was the same <laughs> when I started out. I was... Uh... I had to be full of myself because kasi, kasi nobody believed in me. So mm. I needed to have that much faith in myself yeah. in order for me to push on. Eh, parang, at some point, parang nadala yata ako. So lumaki yung ulo ko ng konti. And then I realized that so, uh, my mentors made me realize it. That forced me to you know reassess myself. Why am I here? And... Uh, ultimately, tama ka, pare. You know, what we do, what we do is a privilege. And when when God made us, God made us to do this. Yes. And not everyone, you know, I understand we have doctors and we have lawyers and teachers and all with their own specialties. This is what, this is what we do. And it's a privilege that can be taken away from us if we do not take care of it. Yes. So um, that's what I think that's most more than being a better singer or a better songwriter. I think I've I've learned to roll with the punches uh, through the years and I've I've become, I hope, a better <laughs> a better human being. My friends uh, seem to think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, you're so behaved na. <laughs> oh yeah diba? that's, that's, ev- that's yeah. everybody you know the irony of it Ebe, is like, you know, now that I've transitioned myself into a safety officer um, and handling shoots like you know Manatile and films and all that it's so funny because the old Jamie would have thought the word responsibility was a four letter word no way and I have gone <laughs> and I have gone from from being the most pasaway to now being responsible for the pasawais Yep. And that's and that's and that's just something that it's just a simple change of an attitude. It's a change of a point of view. It's the gratitude. And it's really a gratitude. it's a choice. It's a, it's a choice you can make every day at every moment. How there's there are things that are that you can't control. The only way you can the only thing you can control is how you react to it and how you exactly. behave towards it. Exactly. So, but the, the story I was telling you this morning about traveling Somewhere Correct. Correct. I mean, you, could have, you could have exploded. <laughs> yeah, but you know what can I control? So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna fix things, etc. etc. Kami lang ni Jamie nagkakaintindihan, guys. So uh, yeah, but it's it's uh, it's about how you it's how you react to things and it's how you behave towards things. And really, if your choice is gratitude and grace and humor, those are better choices than losing your temper. Oh Being yeah. Angry, yeah. You know, yeah. I think I think better choices. I think we need to laugh at ourselves more often. You know. Correct. Especially at, especially at this time, you know, uh, almost everything has been taken away from us. 
So you, we need to ask ourselves, what is left? What do we have to work with? And then you start from scratch again. Hey, we all started from scratch. So yeah. we're just adapting, we're adjusting to, to you know, to whatever it is that, that uh, we're facing um, right now. I do, this, I'm going to admit this much. I, there are days when I really do miss uh, performing live. To the point when where people would tag old photos of me, I would stare at, at them for a really long time. Parang, oh, this was ganito, ganyan, ganyan. So I, I have those days. But I do have I do have those days also na parang like what if when this all comes back I don't. I there are questions about you know parang, do I still want to can I still get back to that level? Do I still want to do this? That's what the pandemic does to you. <laughs> it messes you up talaga. So the sooner think, this is over, the better. I think, though, when this is all over, um, considering all the creative minds that are getting together, that we've been locked up in our, you know, in our homes without an audience, uh, live gigs and all that, we, we, we begin to doubt ourselves. Na parang, do I remember how to do this? Like, for me, I question myself. Can I go back uh, with the Blue Rats, which is my band, and sing three sets? Can I still sing three sets? Exactly. But I, ha- <laughs> but I do have something that's driving me inside saying, even if I am not in the best shape in terms of singing three sets, if an opportunity came for me to sing three sets in front of people, automatic yes, yan pare. I think there's gonna be a renaissance of creativity in all the in all the artistic industries, in all the creative industries, dance. Um, music, theater, sculpture, painting. When this is all over, I think we're going to have a renaissance because people have gone without it for. More I don't. I don't doubt that. I I really don't doubt that. Kaya nga, I think uh, you know when we all come back, uh, music, film, theater. I think you, you consumers, you guys, the fans, you're gonna see. A hungrier version of your artists. Um, ang ginagawa namin ngayon, I had a very interesting conversation with my manager, uh, Rico Blanco, uh, himself, a musician, performer, producer, slash everything. Uh, so, sabi ko sa kanya, so what do I do now, Rico? <laughs> like the shows are dwindling and all. Sabi niya, and he gave a very interesting perspective. Sabi niya, no gigs, no problems. Ebe, now is the time to create. So, in my head, parang meron akong balde, tas pinupuno ko ng tubig. And then, so that when, when we all are ready to go back to each other, puno yung timba ko. Baka dalawa, na yung, baka dalawa yes. yung balde ko. The... You know, I that's, just that's a, that's a great perspective. That's a great way to think about it. Yeah. So now, now all we need to do is to just create. You know, have ideas. Um, I'll show you something. I have one notebook, two notebooks. Yeah. Three notebooks. <clears throat> Four. The other two are in my apartment. So it's just. Ideas. They don't have to be. They don't have to be movies. They don't have to be songs. They don't have to be to act plays. They just have to be ideas uh, at this point. And do not uh, to to all the artists out there listening. Do not let the times discourage you from being who you are. That's. It's a very important lesson that I've learned. I think it's the most important lesson that I learned throughout this pandemic. Hindi talaga ako magpapatinag. 
I'm just gonna yes. keep being who I am. There's there's a reason why God put me here, why God put you there, and we just all have to fulfill our roles. And, sorry, I'm sad about serious to No, man, it's, it's, no, it's beautiful. I can only imagine, eh, but this is this is this is amazing because a lot of people need to hear this. Um, I need to hear this. And I think that the artist that you're taking care of right now couldn't have a better mentor in terms of navigating um, the path that they've chosen. And oh, you not, know, I have my I have my you know, lapses to. Uh, well, we all do, the man. We're all human, diba? But as long as you, it's in the back of your mind, or even if you bring it to the forefront, right? Um, it's an active choice to not be discouraged. It's also an active choice to give in to the darkness or to fight right. the darkness. It's the choices right. that you make. And, and exactly. that's and that's and that, and as you said, it's a choice that you make every day. It is. It is. So don't just don't just stay alive. You know, thrive. Yes. Do something. Yes. Do something. Please help yourself. Especially at this time when some of the people who are supposed to help us cannot. So we need to, we really, really need to, you know, just take care of ourselves. If we take care of ourselves, that gives us the ability to take care of other people. Correct. I agree. I agree. Now, thank you so much for that, Ebe. Okay, we're going to go into, we're hitting an hour and a half <coughs> already. <clears throat> so um, we're going to go into... Uh, the section of the show that that's called we call the rundown, where I'm going to be asking you ten quick questions, first answer that pops into your head, okay. And to those of you guys watching, um, I don't send these uh, questions ahead of time, so Eb is going to be hearing these questions for the very first time. He's right. Okay. He's not lying. He's not lying. <laughs> okay, let's start with uh, the first question. All right, if you had to pick one, if only one, top of your head. What would be your absolute favorite song in the whole world? Moon River. Moon River, yeah. Ganda. Okay, question two. Who would be your favorite local artist or group? Hands down, Gary Granada. Yon. Okay. All right, question number three. What turns you on? Honesty. Humor, 2HS. Yes, very good. All right, question number four. What turns you off? <laughs> How long do you have? I don't know. Arrogance. Arrogance. Arrogance turns me off. True. Okay. Uh, question number five. What is your favorite word? Shawarma. <laughs> Gusto ko yan. Okay, question number six. What drives you crazy? Crazy bad, huh? Crazy bad. What drives you crazy? Disinformation <laughs> drives me crazy. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. Okay, next question tayo. Um, if you can pick, well, what is your guilty pleasure? What is my guilty pleasure? Uh, oh, define guilty pleasure. What is your indulgence? Mo? Ano yung indulge mo? Like, you know, it could be food. It could be, you know, there are some days where I wake up and my guilty pleasure would be listening to Katy Perry on repeat because that's just the mood I'm in and I will give in to that. Uh, it could be um, watching cartoons all day. Guilty oh, pleasure. my family knows this. Karinderia. Pag nakita ko ng karinderia, binumbuksan ko talaga. Ano ulam dito? Kahit di ako kakain. Para lang, just, just out of curiosity. Kasi di ba, ano yan? Kalde-kaldero yan na nakatakip. Oh, oh. eh. Ginaganong ko, isa-isa. Tapos pag tatanungin, oh, kakain po ba kayo? Say ko, hindi po. Titignan ko muna ko. Every karinderia I see, I have to stop. I have to check out the food. Okay, noted on that. Okay, next question. If you could collaborate with any artist, any artist, 
all right, local or international, living or dead, who would that artist be? I think it 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 will always be Ryan Kebiam. I, I don't know if I can I will ever be able to keep up with the man, but he he's a friend. He's like a father to all of us. He's a national artist. He should have been for a while now. Oh. So it's it's always going to be Mr. C. All right, good. Okay, last question. Um, when you get to heaven. What do you want God to say to you? Rest now, son. As simple as that. He knows how he knows how hard I've been working. And uh, everything that I've had to every struggle I've had to overcome. So, when that time comes, that's what I want him to say. Rest now, son. Have a drink with me. Nice, nice. Okay, last call tayo, last call. Um, having had so many achievements, all right, in your in your musical career, what would you want to be most remembered for as an artist? Uh, this is what I always tell uh, my friends and the people very close to me. Right? 20, 30 years down the line, I actually don't care if people don't remember my face or people don't remember my name um, as long as they do remember the songs. And I'm very grateful for, for people like Gary V who have kept Wakano Umiyak alive at KZ Tandingan also. But that's the only, I know Jamie, that's the only legacy I can ever leave behind. Pera mawala yan, yung property mawala, yung damit kukupas, gitara masisira. Pero yung mga awitin ko, it's the one good, it's the one thing I'm actually uh, good at, you know. It's the one thing I can do. So, uh, years from now when I have kids, that's what I'm going to tell them. This is my legacy. <laughs> Sorry, wala kay mana. I have songs. I have songs though. So Yeah. But yeah. And as long as there's one person still alive in this world who will remember your songs, who can sing your songs, who can hum your songs, then somehow you will always be alive. That's all that matters to me, Jamie. That's really that's all that matters to me. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ebe. Thank you so much for taking the time. What a great conversation we've had. I wish we could continue. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we will continue, but then sana face-to-face -face next time. Na hindi na natin oh, yeah, man. Na hindi na oh, natin yeah. inaayos yung buhok mo all the time. With drinks. With, With drinks, drinks, no oh. mask. And no mask. Yes. <laughs> With drinks. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. With drinks, baby. Old Putin. Thank you so much, Ebe. Please thank you. Safe. I'm going Take to enjoy care. this. And um, thank you. More, more power to you, more blessings to you. God bless I you, man. You, bro. Thank you. I love you too, man. God bless you. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ebe Dancel. Wow. Whew, what a great conversation. Um, I sort of had an idea of what I wanted to ask him. But of course, as you guys who have tuned into the show before, it never really quite, you know, quite happens when the conversation takes a life of its own. And I love the fact that we talked about, you know, funny things. But more importantly, um, important things, I think. Um, whether you're an artist or just a human being, I think the most important thing is to be a good human being to the best of your abilities. And to have an, a, a, an amazing artist like Ebidan Cell telling you um, that that's the most important thing, even more than how good you are at singing or how good you are at guitar playing or how good you are at what you do. It's how you are as a person that really, really matters. Thank you so much, Ebe, for this conversation. And man, I can't wait for all of us to get back on stage and um, we'll be seeing you guys soon. So, hey, before we sign off, just a few announcements from Offshore Music. Elisa Marie is releasing a music video for her song, California Time, this Friday, August 6th. Check out her album on all streaming platforms and Offshore Music. That's, uh, you know, an, off an offshore music artist that's just incredible. 
Um, also, um, another uh, announcement, the Eraserheads, Sabado 1995, will have their digital release on August 7. That's a digital release, huh? Because yung plaka, sa September pa. And the remixes, you may have heard that the Esquire recordings include remixes by DMAPS and Lost Bass. That's only going to be available on the vinyl release. But thankfully, my ayuda tayo from Offshore Music when the lockdown happens because they're releasing it online um, on August 7th. Also, check out the 8-8 sale on the Offshore Music website and enjoy discounts from August 8 to 10. It's going to be a, a great uh, pick of your choice from merch and music and, you know, what have you. Just check out their sale on their website because, man, 8-8, pare. I can't believe it's August already, right, guys? But kapit lang tayo because we're going into a two-week lockdown. So make sure, make sure you're safe and sound and make sure to stay tuned. For more announcements from Offshore about our upcoming anniversary, we're celebrating five years of really good music. So uh, we're planning something really big for you guys. Thank you also so much to our friends from Buenos Dias Panadilla and the music, uh, the Misty Mountain Cafe. Thank you so much, guys, um, for your support and the happiness that you bring me. I cannot get through my day without you guys. And of course, our friends from Liquor.ph. Now, Liquor.ph is declaring August as the month of Sherry with Spayburn. Now, finally, in the Philippines, Liquor.ph wants you to try it with a special master class this August 18th. Try the three Spayburn single malts, the 10, the 15, and the 18-year-olds, paired with whiskey-infused Riza chocolate truffles. Oh, that sounds so good. So order your class sampler set from their website for just 999 pesos and find out why Spayburn is one of the best sherried whiskeys when you join this class. So thank you so much to our friends from, whis- from liquor.ph. So guys, I'm Jamie Wilson. Thank you so much for tuning in to On The Rocks. We'll be back next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Now I'm just reminding you guys to please stay safe, stay strong, stay home. And don't stop believing, baby. Keep on rolling. Keep on rocking. And if all else fails, let the music keep you going. And if you find out that life has gotten you shaken up or stirred, mixed up or on the rocks, what matters most is that you take your shot. Thank you very much and good night. On the Rocks with Jamie Wilson is On the Rocks with Jamie Wilson is brought to you by Offshore Music. Go where the sound takes you.